Every smear campaign the Democrat Party and the mainstream media have directed towards President Trump has backfired. Chris, so far the evidence is uncontradicted that the president used taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help him cheat an election. For those of you watching at home, uh, that was not a bathroom break. That was actually a chance for the Democrats to go out and hold a press conference. Uh, ambassador for all the supposed bombshells that, was, that were in your opening testimony. Uh, we're going to continue our investigation. Uh, we are going to continue to pursue Even after the you documents. Even in the report, you're going to yes. continue? Oh, yes. The investigation isn't going to end. When you find yourself on the phone, like the Democrats did with the Russian pranksters offering you nude pictures of Trump, it might be time to ask yourself if you've gone out too far on a limb. And now, ABC News has learned the House Intelligence Committee has obtained audio and video recordings of President Trump's personal attorney, Rudy Giuliani, and the president himself. It's Giuliani dressed in drag with Donald Trump. You know, you're really beautiful. Oh, you dirty boy! You, oh, oh! This impeachment, whatchamacallit, has turned into a train wreck in slow motion. You would think that with the Dems' circular firing squad, their endless Pez dispenser of impotent candidates, along with your average liberals, hands down providing the most prolific contributions to cringe fail compilations ever, how could President Trump and fellow Republicans not have a landslide victory in 2020? So, while we're all eating popcorn, watching the clown show in the house, electronic voting machines have been set up to rig the 2020 election. And when I say rigged, I mean like this. You've probably seen the three card Monty before. The tosser tells you to follow a card as he mixes them up, then asks you to point out that card. That's the game everyone thinks they're playing. The first thing that happens though, is the tosser executes a secret move to switch the cards before the game even begins. Instead of throwing down this card, you're throwing down the card over. So it looks like this card. Allow me to demonstrate for you how the 2019 Kentucky election was rigged. And if not rigged, at the very least, demands further explanation and investigation. Tonight, voters in Kentucky sent a message loud and clear for everyone to hear. I haven't had an opportunity yet to speak to Governor Bevan, but my expectation is that he will honor, he will honor the election that was held tonight, that he will help us make this transition. With respect to our race, would it be, would it be a Bevan race if it wasn't a squeaker? I mean, come on. I mean, really and truly, this is a close, close race. We are not conceding this race by any stretch. Not at all. But more than anything else, we're challenging the media here today not to defend the Democrats as they normally do, but to get into their own investigation and see what they can actually find. Voter fraud needs to be cleared up. I mean, this issue needs to be cleared up and resolved. We need to have confidence in our process. I have heard many reports about irregularities, but I agree that uh, we need to find irregularities if it's in favor of the Democrats or the Republicans. It needs to be a fair uh, election that we can have uh, security in. How did a Kentucky college student, 1,000 miles away on election day, have a signature appear on his voting record in Kentucky that same day? On election day, November 5th, I was in Tampa, Florida, for the entire day, someone had voted under my name, signed my name, and that the clerk said that someone had used my ID to get in. A North Dakota resident contacted the Kentucky Board of Elections to find out why herself and her immigrant husband were registered to vote in Kentucky this election. I'm sorry, what evidence do you have? Well, um, the evidence at this point is up to the Attorney General's office. We've gotten calls, emails, texts. His hotline has over 130 complaints right now. So what we're wondering is, what is he doing with the evidence? There's plenty out there. Is he investigating it? Is anybody looking into this? Whether he is proceeding on this investigation, media reports indicate that Mr. Bashir's office responded by stating the office does not release information regarding investigations. 
Since our news conference Monday, we've been receiving information regarding voter fraud and potential election fraud, some of which we're going to share with you today. You can see from this image, you can confirm from online if you can't see it right now. The governor, Governor Bevin won every precinct in Bell County but one that he carried the county by roughly 61% of the vote. Yet, Governor Bevin lost amongst the advanced ballots by almost the same margin as he won the remainder of the county. We're not saying this is proof. We're saying this raises questions that deserve answers. In this first screenshot, we have um, Attorney General Brashear with 673,948 votes at this moment in the election. Governor Bevin at 662-235 at this moment in the election. So that put uh, Attorney General Bashir ahead 11,713 votes. We switch to this next image a moment later. You see where our vote totals have swapped, or our percent, not swapped, but our vote, our percentages have changed a little bit. That's because our numbers changed. But how did they change? This is what's interesting. Attorney General Bashir now has 674,508 votes. Governor Bevin has 661, 675 votes. That's a change of 650. Governor Bevin lost 560 votes. How do you lose votes on election night? I don't, I don't think that's possible. And then mysteriously, the 560 that he lost magically appeared in Attorney General Bashir's column. How does that happen? If the vote count is off by 5,100 or so, approximately, it means about 1.45 votes per precinct. So imagine sitting there 12 hours, uh, having people vote, and just two, one or two have to be off to change the direction of this election. Lex 18 stonewalled our presenter today, demanding more and more evidence. That's their job, to discover evidence. They really are representing, as they do almost all the time, the Democrat Party. What have you done to investigate this issue? We've, we've done more than you guys have. Well, you, you never said a word about it. What, do, what have you learned? We've actually been on the phone with the county clerks. Sure, sure. Going sure. On there. And you were dead silent in the meeting about it. Because I have not found any wrongdoing. I have found errors. Do you think that should be investigated further? I think what you find out in Kentucky is there are errors on the process that you move along. And then as the, the results are ultimately finalized and being official. Have there been any irregularities here from what you've been reporting and seeing so far? Not that I've seen. I think that they will probably end up finding a few votes here and there that we can pretty much break down and, and call um, clerical errors by clerks. These numbers are entered by hand. Um, this is a very normal thing that happens every election cycle. Software like this is installed in more than 30 states. If someone tampers with it, or it just malfunctions, then the wrong people can win elections. If that happens, hundreds of representatives, judges, and other officials may hold offices they are not elected to. We know there was individual anomalies and issues and, and um, complaints, but there is also data flow, and, and um, I think we need to have, make sure that the integrity includes not only from the moment you fill in your paper ballot, but once you leave and you go home and we all start watching this information flow, that that information is sound. If you go to the Kentucky Board of Elections own website where everything looks normal, notice here in the URL bar, this is a Kentucky.gov website. And at the bottom, you can see this page is officially owned by the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Now watch this. If you click on Kentucky election results and look at the URL bar, you see something very different. Notice it says clarityelections.com. If we inspect the elements of the page, we see that election night reporting was conducted by Seidel. If we scroll down and look, we see who owns the page, Seidel.us. Who is Seidel? Un dinero, poquito. There are people that are in favor of using internet voting since they think that it can improve the democratic process. Uh, for instance, e-participation that can uh, enhance the decision making of, of governments.
According to their client page, they tally the votes for the most prestigious elections worldwide, from the countries within the EU to the EU itself to corporations like McDonald's and various state elections in the United States, such as Kentucky. McDonald's has their own elections? We literally have an offshore company counting our votes. Talk about foreign interference. Encryption is instrumental to electronic communication and financial transactions to protect the security of privacy and authentication. The development of digital ciphering led to the use of trap doors. A trap door strongly resists cryptanalysis by anyone not in possession of trap door information used in the design of the cipher. The fact that election data is being transmitted over the internet requires encryption. Therefore, the software and operating systems used by Seidel in the Kentucky election has encryption trapdoors, and whoever possesses the trapdoor and keying information has a backdoor into the system. This allows the designer to break the system after he has sold it to the client, and yet falsely to maintain his reputation as a builder of secure systems swaying the outcome in a favorable direction within a reasonable margin. This was evident in documents sent to me from a whistleblower regarding the Kentucky 2019 election. Forensic investigators who examined the leaked documents saw evidence that suggested manipulation of vote counts. However, due to encryption, the logs from the computers used to process the total vote counts would need to be seen to see if the totals were manipulated before being transmitted to the Board of Elections. This is Millie Weaver. I just delivered to the governor's office documents that a whistleblower sent me on Friday alleging election fraud in Kentucky these documents were so concerning that I decided to come down here and deliver it to the governor himself. Now that the governor has these documents, I hope that this will spark some kind of reaction and investigation into these very concerning documents that were leaked. There is not any real sense of transparency with how the voting process works. And the more people look into this, and this isn't nothing new, HBO did a documentary on this uh, 13 years ago, I think back in 2006. And um, what you're gonna see is that we do not have checks and balances. And that whether you are a liberal or a conservative, whether you vote one way or the other, we should make sure that we have integrity in the election process. When it's 100% digital and electronic, to make sure that people have confidence because if the people lose confidence in their ability to actually know that the vote they cast is the one that was tabulated for the person they intended it to be for, if we lose that ability, I don't care your ideology, we lose something in America that is the uniqueness of our nation. Since some of our elections are outsourced to private companies who further outsource it to foreign companies to aggregate, encrypt, and tally our votes, the election data becomes proprietary. This is why when you request such information from the county, they write you back and tell you, sorry, that's proprietary, we can't give it to you. Why is it people are always interested in things that are none of their business? Getting that crucial data would only be possible through subpoena. Good luck on that one. The two companies that own and operate the electronic voting machines in Kentucky, Harp Enterprises and Hart InterCivic, conveniently can prove that their system gives a perfect recount and that the encryption works. The Texas Secretary of State has received several reports of people having problems when voting straight ticket. It's specifically related to the Hart eSlate machines. The Secretary of State's office saying people reported the machine changed one or more of their selections to a candidate from a different party. However, they cannot prove that their system gives an honest recount, that neither they nor anyone else has access to potentially hidden functions, whereby votes could be manipulated or swapped in and out with scripts completely undetected. 
Not to mention the owner of both Harp Enterprises and Hart InterCivic has an exclusive contract to furnish systems, custom software, computer equipment, consulting, etc. with the entire Commonwealth of Kentucky. Did I mention they print the ballots too? Gee, I wonder why they can guarantee that the recounts will be the same as the first count. One of the problems that we have is, okay, how can we ensure that the encryption process is really providing the contents of these votes? And it's not, for instance, changing the votes and providing a different results just to manipulate the election. So tonight, ladies and gentlemen, I should like to present for you all a world famous rabbit from a hat. Thank you. The first step is shuffling and re-encrypting the vote. This has nothing to do with the trick. This is just union rules for magicians. <laughs> but what could happen here? This process can cheat. Uh, can cheat, for instance, the, the election officials. Instead of providing a re-encrypted vote, they can change and put another vote. There's nothing here, nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Again here, we, can, we have another point in which the election can be manipulated. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm really sorry. They see, that's not supposed to be there at all. That's supposed to be on a hook, right around, around the back of the table, you see, like that. <laughs> so, proof can be generated here, and at the end, auditors and observers can use this proof for check that. You do not laugh, you do not applaud until the magician produces a rabbit from a hat, like that. Hello. Then at the end is when we can provide the transparency. Sky tolls lead scientists explaining their scheme at a tech conference in Barcelona. And they claim that their scheme is unbreakable because the voter is going to get a receipt, an electronic receipt that proves what the, to them, what they voted for. However, this is all completely undermined. Their verification structure is completely undermined when you don't need a zero-knowledge proof if you're already monitoring the phone and therefore have all the knowledge. And so Carrier IQ and SkyTel working together is absolutely capable of undermining all the votes and doing it very selectively so they only change a few votes. Wow, that's a lot of unchecked power for a small group of people to have. But wait, there's more. But it's not just Seidel. Other companies like ES and S, Dominion, and Smartmatic all connect to database systems like the Global Electronic Management System. While you wrestle with the reality that international interests count, manage, organize, control, and operate most of our elections in the United States, realize that this election software is more than just a tool to possibly manipulate the outcome of elections. SciTo provides secure, transparent, auditable, and accessible solutions for election modernization, e-governance, and e-democracy. Our e-democracy solutions help cities, counties, and countries improve their citizen engagement. Amazon is a global partner with Seidel. And Seidel uses Amazon web services to host their cloud systems. Google and Seidel have partnered to provide live-time Google Analytics of election results, as well as creating an online voting interface. Results are displayed for the public and media using Seidel's election night reporting. The product is designed to address the needs of all users with specific attention spent on users with accessibility needs. This product also was developed with a responsive design so that it can be easily viewed from any device or screen size. Do we really want to trust Google's hands in our elections? when most of Google is run by a bunch of deranged SJWs? Um, we have some leaked video, uh, and it comes from Google, the Google yeah. bosses. They were pretty hysterical after the election of Donald Trump in 2016. I certainly find the selection uh, deeply offensive, and I know many of you do too. Is there anything positive you see from this election result? <laughs> <laughs> Oof.
Uh, boy, that's, that's a really tough one right now. I mean, why bother lobbying when you can just go around it and rig the elections to your favor and only let the politicians win that have your interests in mind? Why would tech giants have an interest in software used in elections globally? Gee, I can't imagine why. Many governments around the globe are racing to infuse technology into just about every aspect of its city's operations. And I mean every part. Including public transportation, IT connectivity, water and power supply, sanitation and solid waste management, efficient urban mobility, e-governance, and citizen participation. And it does this using every buzzword imaginable, from big data to the Internet of Things. The Internet of Things, or IoT, is influencing our lifestyle from the way we react to the way we behave. IoT is a giant network of connected devices. These devices gather and share data about how they are used and the environment in which they are operated. Sensors are embedded in every physical device. It can be your mobile phone, electrical appliances, vehicles, barcode sensors, traffic lights, and almost everything that you come across in day-to-day -day life. You see, it's not that this software is part of our elections. This software and our election is part of something else. Our smart governance solution covers not only smart cities, but a province, a smart country, a smart county, any smart electoral government body that we actually choose to address. From a top-down perspective, we leverage tools like surveys, e-consultations, petitions. From a bottom-up perspective, we provide tools like CIDL e-democracy portal and CIDL social media monitoring. CIDL is literally harvesting your personal social media information and metadata for elections to nudge us. A nudge is undoubtedly one of the most successful public policy uh, uh, initiatives of the last uh, decade or so. Voluntarily or through election manipulation towards their model of global governance. You combine that with data mining software and predictive behavior and you can even figure out which voters aren't going to check and aren't going to look, check, or complain and call you back and you know which 1% of the votes to, to flip, which 2% of the voters to flip with very predictable results. So the idea is to have localized control integrated with the global centralized system. In other words, this is our version of the social credit score, but rather than just a credit score, it is a totally digital integrated system where everything is interconnected through a centralized control database and the election machines and software are just one aspect and phase of it. So the Internet of Things is really just connectivity and processing power embedded into the world around us. And that's, this is also the industrial world. It is our cities. So we're going to hear a lot about smart cities, about smart cars, and about the smart home. Because when everything is connected, all of a sudden we have data that allows us to really understand the world in ways that we never were able to before. Globalism merging with progressivism through the Internet of Things and e-governance. Global initiatives data mining our internet activity, manipulating our election towards their end goals. Tonight we take a look at a nation that has put nearly all of its government services online. Key to it all? One card. It's a digital ID with encrypted files used together with a pin code. Virtually everything, she says, can be done online. So banking, healthcare, voting, all done digitally. Yes. Uh, it's also energy companies, uh, telco companies, so buying things online or seeing just your bills or your energy consumption, this is all available uh, with a card. And the next step for this small country is to expand beyond its borders by offering what it calls e-residency to everyone in the world. We are not looking at election fraud in the traditional sense of stealing votes from one candidate or the other. We are talking about a database system that takes your voting registration, DMV records, your available metadata, public information, then creates a unique profile that is integrated into a modeling system that projects live-time modeling of likely voter outcome. 
This model can then be used to game the election by generating scripts to run in place of actual vote tallies, modifying the voter turnout to a desired outcome within believable ranges. Could this be why they failed to steal the election in 2016 for Hillary Clinton? Because the polls had greatly underestimated the vote turnout for President Trump? They had all the polls rigged for Hillary. Problem is, they bought into their own rigged polls and they under-anticipated the massive red wave that came with Trump on election night in 2016. Thus, they got their butts handed to them by the American people. If you go back to the beginning of the election meddling debacle, you see that initially it was Homeland Security that got caught hacking into the 2016 election. Channel 2 Action News questioned Georgia's Secretary of State about a hack. He told us it traced back to a Department of Homeland Security IP address. Well, mad as hell. Georgia's Secretary of State Brian Kemp all fired up after what he called a massive cyber attack on the agency's network on November 15th traced back to United States Department of Homeland Security IP address. But according to this letter from Kemp to the Homeland Security Secretary Jay Johnson on November 15th, there was an attempted breach of the Georgia Secretary of State's network linked to a computer with a Homeland Security address. Kemp writes, at no time has my office agreed to or permitted Homeland Security to conduct penetration testing or security scans of our network. Could be a, a bad actor in the administration. Could be a, a bad actor in the administration. However, they said it was because they were hot on the trail of the Russians hacking the election. Remember? It was an unprecedented cyber attack ordered by senior Russian leadership on the U.S. election. Now President Obama is ordering the intelligence community to conduct a full review of Putin's meddling. But then, when it all came out that there was no proof of Russians hacking the election, everyone seemed to forget about Homeland Security having hacked the election. Well, I think it's going to fit in, uh, Boris, to this investigation that uh, President Obama has called for. Um, it's that Russia tried, perhaps, to look into meddling in the election. Russia tried, perhaps, to look into meddling in the election. Not that they actually affected it, because if you remember, election officials, DHS officials, tried to assure the American public that even if Russia was trying to meddle, it wouldn't be able to actually affect the outcome. For instance, how was Homeland Security getting in and out of the voting machines? DHS officials tried to... But when the states came forward showing the forensics didn't show Russia hacked their machines, rather the machines were only hacked by the Department of Homeland Security, that's when the narratives took an important twist and turned into a collusion story. We were beating the drum pretty hard, beginning with a conference call I had with every state secretary of state on August 15th. <laughs> The Obama aid package to the Ukraine with the billion dollar loan guarantee Biden threatened to have withheld if a particular prosecutor wasn't fired just so happens to be the same aid package instrumental to Seidel getting a field office in Kiev. Seidel's election training provides a permanent online trading platform to the Ukrainian Electoral Commission. The Obama administration must have known, among other things, that there would be discoveries of foreign meddling in the 2016 election that benefited Hillary Clinton, but not quite enough. And knowing that the Democrats and media would be implicated had to put a spin on it, accusing Trump of exactly the same thing they did. Gee, you don't think this is why the Democrats started up this bogus impeachment inquiry, do you? What have we learned from the Democrats' impeachment inquiry? They promised the country a fair hearing. What have they delivered? The impeachment version of three-card Monte. Notorious short con card trick where the mark, in this case President Trump and the American public, stands no chance of winning. The Trump administration began investigating the allegations of foreign election meddling in 2016, 
to get to the bottom of what initiated the surveillance of the Trump campaign and to find out what the basis was for the special counsel investigation into false allegations of the Trump campaign collusion with Russia. In other words, Trump wanted to find out who started it. In order for the Trump administration to get to the bottom of the foreign meddling in the 2016 election, they had to send investigators outside the U.S. through channels outside those set up by the previous administration to places like the Ukraine to obtain information regarding whatever was on the DNC server. It's called the swamp. And you know what happened? And you know what I did? A big favor. I caught the swamp. I caught them all. Let's see what happens. Nobody else could have done that but me. I caught all of this corruption that was going on and nobody else could have done it. Pro-Democrat investigators from the National Anti-Corruption Bureau of Ukraine, or NABU, willfully helped the Democrat Party and candidate Hillary Clinton through the release of financial dirt on then-Trump campaign manager Paul Manafort during the 2016 election. Allegedly, and most interesting, there is a mirrored version of the DNC server in the Ukraine that has revealing information on it debunking DNC claims about Russia hacking the server. What if what's actually on the DNC server is the blueprints for how the Democrats hacked the 2016 election? Holdovers from the Obama administration who were party to or have an interest in the Ukraine corruption became alarmed that the Trump administration was using alternative channels and closing in on their foreign election meddling, money laundering and foreign aid schemes and their questionable quid pro quo deals. So they did what any crafty criminal would do before getting caught. They tipped off Adam Schiff via the whistleblower and are now using a contrived impeachment process to cover up their own crimes. Talk about a real plot twist for a made-for-TV soap opera. This is going to get real good when the Horowitz and Durham investigations are complete. In the meantime, while we all sit here and watch this train wreck in slow motion, the fix is in for 2020, election fraud. So here's the real question. Can the red wave overwhelm the Democrats' electronic voting in 2020? Well, only you can make that decision. The Democrats can't steal an election if there's an overwhelming wave of Trump voters that hit the polls. And if there's more whistleblowers out there that continue to shed light on the corruptions inside the Democrat Party and the deep state. You guys can help support my work and the work of InfoWars by going and taking advantage of the recent Black Friday sales at InfoWarsStore.com. Right now we have 50% off and triple Patriot points for purchases made during Black Friday. So please go there right now and help support our mission to expose this truth and to take on the deep state. Communist China quietly bought up Hollywood more than a decade ago, and they've been approving almost all the scripts that you see on television or in the movies for many years. And now they own our debt. Now they own the Democratic Party. Now they've merged with Silicon Valley to censor patriots off the air. The Washington Post comes out and says they hope that Xi Jinping, the dictator of China, will, quote, destroy Trump. That's a headline. So InfoWars has been the Paul Revere of this operation. We have blown the whistle continuously and have been proven right. And that's why it's more important than ever that we override Silicon Valley and their Chicom masters by word of mouth and spread the word about InfoWars and check out InfoWarsStore.com. That's where the arsenal of our republic is being funded. That's where the tip of the spear is continually being forged is InfoWarsStore.com.